survive. Sherry, sure, is he okay now? He's still not cramping, is he? I went home and he's sleeping. He's, he's, it stopped. Just, well, he's got to keep drinking even tonight. It was both off. legs. That was the problem. We couldn't stand, couldn't sit. We're live. We're live. All right, Sherry. Far away. Okay. 402. Tom Shira. Yep. Jason Worling. Yep. Larry Wren. Here. Sherry Waddington. Here. Tundra. Here. Beth. Here. Dave. Bernie. Here. Barb. No, Barb. Don't know. I didn't. Who else? Who else am I missing? Sean. Evan. Will not Sean. They will not be here. Evan. Annette. Uh, he says he's at work, but to call, I don't know if we can do that with our new Annette. situation in here. And Annette. Four people absent. Okay, looking over last month's minutes. Any corrections, deletions? If not, any motion to accept? I move we accept. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, Jason. All right, old business. Um, JC Park is still un in progress. If you haven't been out there, the uh, courts did get resurfaced. Uh, we are going to put a, another surfacing on top of that, like a tennis court type Sportmaster surface. So you'll have a, a blue court and a red court, one for the blue streaks and one for since Scott May uh, did end up winning a national championship and going undefeated with Indiana. So we're looking to get that. So you can differentiate between the two courts, blue court and red court. Um, with Rather Field, we're looking at still putting up the uh, netting around the, for foul balls. Uh, so the, the cars that are parked there for the church and for the games don't get as many dings uh, in years to come. And uh, there's supposed to be a basketball tournament on August 7th at the Scott May Court. So we're, we're shooting for that for getting the court surface. That's a question. Yeah. On the, are you talking about the backboards you're gonna we're, change out? We're looking to get new backboards as well. Good, good, because I looked, I stopped and looked at them, and then you're gonna have it striped before this. Be striped and, Any yep. way we can get that done before that tournament? That's starts? what we're, that's our, that's our goal, is cool. to get them, get cool. them done by that's then. Good, good, yep. good, good. Is that like a tournament that used to be there, Jason? This one's, uh, I think the Brothers of Basketball are, are doing a, yeah, it's not the Young World. Young World actually paid for the hoops um, originally that are that are at the, at the courts. So those those will be coming down. But yeah, this tournament is a different tournament. Okay. Good. Anything else on those? It, did they finish the concession stand slash picnic? Yeah, they painted them. They're painted. Um, I think there's a couple other uh, improvements that they'd like to look at over there. And then we're also looking at fencing down the road too, because I know that the outfield fence needs a little bit of work. Who, who has that under their name? What do you mean? Is that un still under one person that... Oh, Snusky Travelers is still Snusky under a bird. Snusky Travelers yep. still. Yeah. <laughs> Any other questions on JC? Um, and that's out, but um, Mills Creek has been having a couple Fourth of July weekend was great. This past weekend was great. Um, numbers wise, I'm sure we'll have a report for July at the next meeting in August. Um, there was a, what a four, Fourth of July scramble, I believe out there too. I got canceled. Did it get canceled? Okay. Um, but by all accounts, everything's going really well at the golf course still. Um, we are trying to get the pump fixed. Still, I believe there's a, I don't know if it's a delay on getting that pump for the irrigation system. It was running, but now it's told this morning and they have a, something with a valve. It ran, but now they got a problem. Okay. That's what Paul works for me this morning. All right. Um, anything else on Mills? Summer programming, I think Tondra can take 
Okay, so we are still programming our six parks, three in the morning from 11 to 12, 45 ish, and then three parks in the afternoon. Um, we have special guests that have visited the parks, Susan Shickley from Ohio State uh, Extension with, with uh, nutrition education. Uh, the Sandusky artisans have been going out doing um, special ma mask painting activity. Ogo, Demar Moore was there with a the mini basketball clinic. Is Nico still going to do soccer? I have an email from him in my yeah. inbox from so today. So we want to get a soccer camp in there before the end of the season. And um, it's, it, you know, uh, it's going well. It's going well. Can't complain. So we're still feeding and... Yep, we feed our we feed Good. our kids at the park every day, uh, the morning park, and then the staff comes back to Triple Deuce to get the afternoon totes to take to their afternoon parks. Good. What's the average number for each park? Uh, the, it varies. It varies, and in, in some parks are, um, you know, it's a little more challenging for the morning parks because kids don't get up in the morning, and you know. So I, I just posted the. Uh, uh, artisans will be there tomorrow at J.C. North, Whiteman Weber Park. So I try to do a post when we have a special guest on Facebook and social media so they can bring their kids. They don't have to, you know, they can just bring their kids from anywhere to do the activity. So hopefully they'll, I know we'll have some kids there tomorrow. And then uh, programs. Right. Yep. We're going to that. All right. So, <laughs> programming. We we decided to program uh, the rec room at Triple Deuce this year, and that has been pretty, pretty explosive. So Mondays we have uh, creative writing classes, uh, young poets, and then we have Tuesdays is Scooter One Hundred One. This is at the skate park. Scooter One Hundred One. We have skateboard One Hundred One. And then we have dance inside of the rec room on Tuesdays. Uh, Wednesdays is Let Miss Tondra Breathe Day. So there's no programming in the rec room on that day. And then Thursdays is Spanish. And Fridays is the intro to intergenerational drawing, which is in a collaboration with Serving Our Seniors. Uh, we have uh, some seniors and some young people that are taking instruction from a freelance artist, uh, Richard Sherman. And it's, it's, it's a great class. Um, and shout out to uh, Sandusky Register and BCSN for supporting uh, the rec department with, the, with their um, footage and stuff that they, they do. We're in the paper actually today with the um, Make It So Easy program that was, uh, gave the opportunity for the youth to the young ladies that created garments to be in a, a for real live professional fashion show on the pier. And it was very well attended, and it was a great experience for the kids. And then we have Tap Fit with Tondra on Tuesdays and Thursdays at the rec room. Um, we'll take we'll take that to the back to the pier in the fall when it's a little cooler. That's it. Any questions regarding summer programming? None. Special events follow up. So since our last uh, meeting, we've been going bonkers with with uh, programming. So the one of the first events on the pier was the um, Toast for Ohio Wine Festival, and the Marigrand Museum hosted that with uh, help from the Art Walk, and also had four food trucks. Um, from past years, the, the museum tripled the amount of their most, or their record crowd. So people were ready to get out and do some things. So they're looking to come back next year. So the second Saturday in June for next year will be Toast for Ohio Wine Fest at the same location. Uh, All for Abs Glow Run had a, a good turnout for, um, with everything considered considered with the state just opening up June 2nd. Um, and that race really went well, having the double loop inside the, in the course and keeping people off of you know the, the roads because it is a glow run. Um, it was well received, no damage to the course, um, didn't affect round play at all because you know course was closed. So. They'll be back uh, next year again as well. Gazebo Concert Series kicked off June 29th. I've got cards here, but I'll just let everybody know who's maybe watching at home that uh, the, these schedules are in the lobby at 240 Columbus Avenue. Uh, it's also on the Sandusky Community Celebrations Council website. And if those meetings or those concerts 
uh, get rained out. They actually still have them. They'll be at Zion Lutheran Church the same night, 7 o'clock. That was uh, nice of them to allow that. Yeah, they can just you enter from the back there, uh, the west doors. Uh, I don't know how it, how it went last night, but they had to rain out last night and then brought it uh, over to Zion. Ron Albert is involved helping with that. Yeah, yeah. Well, that explains it. <laughs> Good guy. Love Ron. All right. Um, and then, speaking of Tuesdays, our movie uh, last night has been pushed to tonight. So we're, we're running Aladdin tonight. Good thing we called it because it did rain yeah. at that right time. Right at seven. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yep. Um, Stars and Stripes, 4th of July. Uh, if anybody made it down, I know Tom was there serving food. Dave was there. Sherry, Beth, you were there too. Um, it was pretty packed. A uh, good time for all. Um, we did have the Boy with the Boot 5K and had over 130 participants, which um, doubled from what we had pre-registered. So we had about 65 people pre-registered, and then we had a lot of walk-ups. Course for that was was well received because we kept it on the pathway and kept most of the course off the road. So we're looking to continue that uh, next year on the 4th of July, which is a Monday next year. Um, anything, questions regarding old business or any things I talked about there? So new business, uh, special events, what we have going on. Uh, I did have Jeff from the Masters Walleye Circuit reach out via Shores and Islands and they'd like to bring a tournament here uh, next April. I think it's April 25th, uh, around that time. Uh, there is a $5,000 host fee, so that's something that I wanted to bring to the rec board to discuss and possibly have a motion to uh, move forward with plans for that for next year. Uh, it's about 100 and, I think he said about 170 boats, uh, which is a little bit smaller than what we had at the uh, FLW last year, but it's still a pretty sizable tournament. Uh, it'd be two days in April. Uh, brings some people to the area, fills up some hotels on uh, before Cedar Point gets going. So it's it's a great tournament. I can send more information unless uh, you guys feel comfortable with. Well, they hear, weren't they here before? I think Dave and I worked one of those. I worked a couple of them. Yeah, yeah, did pretty good. Yeah, they kind of they, they do hop around. They go Port Clinton, Huron. They really want to get in the bay this year or next year. I was year. down there this week and it was packed when I went through. That was the. I'd have to look it up, but it was a scheduled uh, tournament down there. Wow. About good. 70. I think they had about 70 boats. They had a good turnout. There, yeah. yeah. Anything on, you want me to bring that up at the next meeting, or is that something that? Make a motion. I think we need to put a motion out to, are we partnering with anybody? Is this strictly just going to be the city? It would be the city providing a host fee of 5000 We would budget it for next year. You think we can handle it? I, 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 yeah, I think we can handle it. So I need a motion to approve. Second. Oh. Second. I make a motion. We invite them to come next year at five thousand dollars. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. <laughs> You're going to send more information out to Chase when you get it? Yeah, I'll have all the details um, as far as, you know, like you said, they, they are coming back from being here in past years, and that that's kind of a standard host fee for, um, it's even less than what we've had for some other tournaments. I remember Dave and I worked out one morning, like three in the morning. We're done. <laughs> <laughs> so making that motion puts you in as a volunteer as well, I think, for April of 22. Yeah. <laughs> Um, our movies by the bay, like I said, we, we did push back um, last night's to tonight. Uh, we have several more scheduled throughout the uh, season. Next week's had to get moved to Thursday night because of uh, we were able to secure Hoobastank and Living Color to play a concert on the pier next Tuesday because they're coming off their tour to do a Tuesday night show in Sandusky. So a goofy movie will be on the 22nd which is a week from Thursday. Um, that schedule is posted at the Whiteman Weber Safety Fair and Celebrations Fun Fest Committee. Sorry, the committee sponsored the movies. Get it right. Get it all right. Just Kids Fest. <laughs> Kids Fest sponsored the movies. Um, 
and we're looking to maybe add a movie of Elf on Christmas in July, which would be the 25th, a Sunday, to coincide with the Fireland Symphony Orchestra concert that's at 7 o'clock on the Sunday the 25th at 7 p.m. So there's lots of things going on, and I think uh, I've seen several of you down for, uh, we had the concert on Thursday, which was uh, the Parrots of the Caribbean, which we had a little bit of rain, but people still made their way out there, and it was a pretty good concert. And then our Tuesday night movies have been taken off. I have to say this. We were at the first one when I was with you guys. Yeah. Those people were not moving, and they seen the storm coming. I wondered what it would be like after I left, because I thought about all those older people, because they had to pack up their chairs, get to their cars, get their cars up. What was it like? It was just a rain shower. I mean, it wasn't... They didn't you know, leave? No, some people just stuck around. Some other people had umbrellas in their cars and were, were prepared. So it was... And then we had a lot of people... We found that a lot of people were going to downtown establishments prior to the concert and waiting for the rain to go through. And then they came in after. They just waited for the rain to go through because they were watching the radar. So, yeah. At one time, it rained pretty hard. Yeah. Well, at least on the way to the stadium, it did. Yeah. I don't know if anybody made it down for the 4th of July concert, but Fireland Symphony loved the venue for the, uh, the 4th of July patriotic concert that was going on down there. It was, it was good to have that, you know, on the new pier. And now, there wasn't a storm this 4th of July, was no. there? No. No. Hot. First time in a while, but it was hot. I'm telling you, no umbrellas flying, no people running around 3 o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> wow. We'll take that for next year, too. Yeah. Any um, questions on the special events that we have going on? That's been taking the majority of, of my time recently, just trying to make sure the movies get going and the stage gets going. And um, We do have, and I should put this out there too for anybody listening, we do have shelter reservations are available online. That's for all of our shelters, uh, including Shoreline Park, Lions Park, Whiteman Weaver Park, Dorn Park, uh, those are all online. The only ones that are not online are the Mylander Pavilion and the gazebos. And the reason why the Mylander Pavilion is not on there is because we try and work around special events to make sure we don't book something right before or after a wedding, uh, make sure that uh, we, we have that scheduled. And, and we're taking reservations for even 2022 already for weddings, working around those special events. And gazebos we don't do online just because we don't want somebody reserving it to have a graduation party and not realize that there's no tables at Washington Park Gazebo um, and that it's more for weddings. So far, how many times has Mylander's shelter been used? The pavilion? Which is better to say how many times it has been. Right. A lot. We've, yeah. had, we've had some weekends where there's a Friday graduation party, a Saturday graduation party, and a Sunday graduation party. And nice. All the reviews have been overwhelmingly good. Um, we did have an issue with the lock on the door, but that's fixed. Yes. Now. Um, but it's it's been and been great. To is it mostly the early part, or is it through the night? Oh yes, it's 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 evening events. We've had some the evening. last one last Saturday started at seven. We have an so ice that's cream. The second part, right? You can rent it for half or all. Oh, you can. Oh, it's a four-hour block minimum. Yeah. That's what I mean. But we don't we don't book two usually two back to back. No. Um, in one day, we'll look into next year and kind of look at what we had this year and and Those reassess. Those are the flipping, you know, flipping yeah. the tables and cleaning up and sanitizing. It was one event per day. Yep. We don't have staff for that. Do they do they usually want to stay for the whole day or are they taking just part? I think it's, it's just part. Usually five to six hours yeah. is the. And that's including cleanup. We do have weddings in October. Almost every weekend in October is a wedding on a Saturday. So didn't see that one coming, but great. Yeah. November, it starts to open up. So we'll look into doing some other programming down there in November. Future programming. So Tondra has a few things that are getting off the ground. Um, I still haven't forgotten about Dave and, and getting our strongest kid competition, but we got to... <coughs> Do that well. I was thinking maybe getting a gym involved. Do what? To get a gym, like Next Level or Dorsey involved with that one as well. Yeah. Um, but haven't forgotten about that. But Tanja, do you want to talk about anything? Um, just like winter break camp, I'm I'm excited about getting, being proactive with getting that 
um, set. The dates that I would like it would be the December 21st, 22nd, 23rd, and then the following week, 28th, 29th, and 30th, with another return of the New Year's Eve party on the 30th. Um, we have Fall Tap Fit to be back in there in the pavilion Tuesdays and Thursdays, two, two tribe sessions. Um, I'm looking at sitting down soon, hopefully, to do an end of the summer party with uh, on the good time for the kids um, before they go back to school and try to incorporate some kind of um, encouragement and and some celebration of how how well these kids you know embraced the world we live in today and made it through the summer and do all the virtual stuff and getting them prepared for a school year this year. Um, I think that's all I have until something else comes in here. Yeah. I'll let you know. All right. We'll, we'll be requesting the, the schools for the winter break camp and also the bring them back to Cameo Volleyball League uh, on Monday nights starting in September. So those are two major requests for programming that we're going to have coming up. Um, but that's, that's about it that we have right now. Just we're, we're, we're chugging along. It's our busiest time of year, so apologize if there's people that are trying to get return phone calls and emails. We're getting those as much as we're getting back to people as, as quickly as possible. The person I kept asking about said he couldn't get anybody to return his calls. He did call me back and say that he did end up in another city where he was welcomed and he gets to help out with our creation. Okay. Somebody that was looking to volunteer? Is that what? Uh, somebody that was looking to volunteer? I think he wanted to run some type of sporting events for kids, okay. camps. Okay. Mm. So it would probably be like a volunteer. Carter was his last name. Okay. Uh, I didn't ever, did he call me? He didn't say who he called. He just said he called a couple of times and couldn't get a return call. So. But he's happy him. wherever he is. Yeah. Jason, what about uh, Orlando Pace Park, that basketball rim? So they they were waiting on a camera for the park, and that's what was kind of holding up, holding it up. They want to get a camera mounted there just in case, because it was that we've already lost two backboards to vandals or vandalism. Um, so that when they put the new backboard up, they want to make sure they have a camera to kind of keep watch on it for a little bit. Um, so that's they have it. They were going to install it once they have the camera installed. I think they were. Who watches the camera? It's it's got a, a loop on it. So if, if there was an issue, they'd be able to go back and look to see. Oh, when there's issues, they go yeah. and then they. Oh, okay. Yeah. So that's what I was waiting on. Because that's what I, I, you've probably seen on Facebook where people are asking why this the school parks are locked up, and they said because of vandalism. Yeah, I can't speak. And to they that. said that they, that was city taxpayers' money. Why would you lock the kids out? Like school uh, parks, for instance, like this. Um, the intermediate, the intermediate, the intermediate yeah. it's locked. It, it, they still yeah. have the fence, and they still vandalize there. I mean, so why don't they just get cameras? Wow. There, there are help. some on the building, but I'm not sure how far out they reach. I see that one both ways. I see the taxpayers with mm -hmm. kids because we'd be at baseball games, and that was the entertainment for the toddlers. Right, right. But then I see too how hey, we're not going to keep replacing what you keep destroying. So I see both ways. What about the other equipment that got pulled, like down here where we have the Whiteman Weaver? You know, in May every year that park. Oh, uh, Sneskwee Pavilion. Yeah. Yeah, that equipment uh, was. In May, I believe, was our, our crew went out there and was checking things out, and a couple of the slides were broken with like bad cracks, and then there was also the covering that that they put over the metal was peeling up and could be a danger. So um, we didn't have any plans to replace it because it was an emergency like removal, just to make sure no kids were going to get hurt uh, with that equipment. So once once I think we get back into planning for the pavilion or, or even for next year, we usually we have, when we replace like here in park, we have a plan of what's going in there before we even start tearing stuff out. But this, this was a removal for safety. Like even the, the little diggers that were out there, those were just poles sticking up. So it was, it was just to get those out of there like before anybody hurt them. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It was taken out to make sure nobody hurt themselves. And I don't know what happened in the, year 
past, like if there were adults on it or what, but a couple of those slides were, I have, I can send you some pictures too of what the slides look like and it was deemed a safety risk, so they, they, they removed it. And then during our cleanup last week, and it, we did the Ambeds Cholera Park, that whole area around the neighborhoods around there. Do we still maintain that Ambeds playground? Ball field. Yep. Because when I walked in the, it looked like a lot of rocks and stones in that area. Well, we, so we have priority use agreement with, with them for the field. So what we do is get it ready at the beginning of the season, and then it's up to them to maintain the fields throughout their season. Whether it's dragging or, um, you know, putting putting the bases back in after they're doing stuff, so that's that's on the league. If there's an issue with the field that they need addressed, they usually contact me, and then I contact our grounds maintenance crew. Okay. Have they contacted you lately from ambulance with problems going on there? Um, I've talked with with the league, um, with Lamarcus from the league about some of the things that have been out there. Um, and he did have a parent coach meeting, uh, I believe it was at three o'clock Monday, I believe. And I know Officer Hill uh, was there for that too. And they're, they're taking a proactive approach on it. It's, it sounds like it's more of not as much of, uh, the, there's no problems with the kids that are playing the league and they wanna keep the league going for these kids. But it's, it's the problems when when kids are getting dropped off that don't play in the league, or there's issues with parents and coaches, you know, having things. So they're they're working through them. They're they're trying to trying their best to address them. And I know uh, Officer Hill is is on top of that and working with them as well. Sherry, I played down there 60 years ago. It was the same. <laughs> <laughs> but violence People today is rocks. different from right, violence right? back I in mean, your day. I mean, it was pretty I'm sorry, much. I'm here to tell you, <laughs> violence is different. Yeah, a lot now. of time down there, Dave. What's that? Spent a lot of time down there. Yeah. Yeah. You Every just day. you just hate for it to come to the violence that does occur these days. Uh, they shoot now. They don't uh, swing fist. Oh. All right. Anything else on our new business? Nope. Any open? Anything that are open? I just like to mention the Lang Trust and their concerts to go along with the uh, Thursday night concerts. They have four concerts, which would be Friday, July 30th, Friday, August 13th, Friday, September 10th, and Sunday, September 26th. There are four performances that will be on the Erie County Community Foundation stage um, that are outside of the Thursday night series. So these flyers are available at our, um, in 240 Columbus Avenue, and we have them at our office at, on uh, Meg Street over there, so. Is there some here? Yep, I would grab one and post it. No. Yeah. This is 240 this Columbus is Avenue. Yep. Okay, I forget where I was at. And if we're, <laughs> if there's any other open discussion, otherwise I need to run back and click the button. Move we adjourn. Second.